In this video, I'll show you how to add Grok4 to your N8N workflows. Now, Grok4 is currently leading the benchmarks in a lot of different tests, and it's outperforming models like O3 Pro, Gemini 2.5 Pro, as well as Claude 4 Sonnet in many different benchmarks. So it's got a context window of 256,000 tokens, which might not be as much as Gemini 2.5 Pro, but it's similar to other competing models, and it's got a very similar price range as Claude 4 Sonnet as well. I do want to mention that Grok4 is a multi-modal model, and it does support things like vision and built-in tool use. So this video is also going to be a kind of a review of Grok4 as well. Grok4 is supposed to be really good at STEM tasks, so I think in this video we'll actually ask you to write some code, and we'll compare that code to something like Claude 4 Sonnet, We'll then also test out the vision capabilities of this model, and we'll also test out the built-in web search tool as well. To get started, go to x.ai, and then click on API and API console login. If this is your first time using this platform, you will have to go through a short setup process. This will effectively ask you to load some credit onto your account, and I think you can add as little as $5. So go through that setup process, then click on API keys. From here, click on create API key. Then let's give it a name like N8N tutorial. And let's click on save. Right, this will now give us this API key. So let's copy this. Then back in N8N, let's click on this drop down next to create workflow. And let's click on create credential. From this list, let's search for XAI. Then let's click on continue. We can give it a name like XAI YouTube. Then it's paste in that API key and click on save. If everything was done correctly, you should receive this green message. And if this fails, it probably means you haven't loaded credit onto your account yet. So now that we've added this credential, we can go ahead and create a new workflow. I'm simply going to call this Grok4 Agent. And I will simply add a new trigger. Let's add the on chat trigger. Then let's click on add AI and let's add an AI agent. All right, then let's add a chat model. And this time we'll search for XAI. Let's click on XAI Grok. And then let's select that credential that we just created. And from the model list, we can now select Grok for 0709, which is the latest variant of this model. And that is all we have to do. We can now add some memory if we wanted to, or simply add the simple memory node with a context window length of say 20. We should be able to test this now. So in the chat, let's say hello. And after a few seconds, we do indeed get this response back. Cool. So Grok4 is supposedly very good at STEM tasks like math, science, and coding. So let's compare Grok to something like Claude 4 Sonnet, which is a fantastic coding model. I'm simply going to rename this node to Grok 4. And what I'm also going to do is add another model to this workflow. And let's add an anthropic chat model. And I'll select Claude 4 Sonnet, like so. I'm just going to rename this node as well to Claude 4 Sonnet. So let's ask Claude to write some code for us, and then we'll give the same test to Grok4. All right, so in the chat, I'm just going to start a new chat. I'm going to give this quite a detailed prompt, as I really do want to give the model the best chance of succeeding here. So let's say, build a fitness tracker app using Next.js 15, React 19, Tailwind CSS, and ShadCN for styling and components. And let's also say, use a SQLite database to store the data locally, create the database and tables if they do not yet exist. And finally, do not add user auth at this stage, as I'll be the only user. Keep the app simple and only add the minimum amount of features to make the app useful. And let's send this to Claude. All right, let's have a quick look at this. We get the project setup instructions, the database setup, then all the components that we have to build. So what I'm going to do next is actually copy all of the stuff over to a code editor 
so we can test it out. All right, I've opened this blank folder in cursor. So I'm simply going to follow all of these instructions. So I'm going to copy over this project setup stuff and run it in the terminal. And while these dependencies are installing, I'm going to manually copy over each of those files. All right, so while copying across some of these files, I noticed that this specific route is actually incomplete. So what I simply did was enter continue and Claude was able to continue generating the rest of the components. Now, this is not necessarily Claude's fault. There's probably some max token value set somewhere, but I'll simply continue copying across all of this code. All right, so I've copied across all of the code and components, and I've started up the development server. And this is what the app currently looks like. Now, the styling seems to be all messed up, and I'm not going to fix this, as I really want to see what these models can do when we one shot prompt it. Now let's just enter something like run and we'll leave the date as is. And let's say we ran for 30 minutes and was tiring. Let's lock this workout. And we can see the run was added and here we can delete it. Or if we click on this button, it seems we can add additional exercises as well. So what I do want to test is whether the data is persisted so whether the data is indeed added to a database. So let's refresh this page and we can see the run is still there. So Sonnet is indeed using the database as well. And looking at the code, there aren't that many syntax errors, but I do see there is this one import that is failing and there might be other issues as preventing the styling from working as well. But let's see how Grok4 fares with the exact same prompt. So let's swap out Claude for Sonnet for Grok4. And then in the chat, let's pass in that exact same prompt. And let's see how Grok4 does. Okay, let's have a look at this response. So it's giving us a set of key features, which is actually really nice. I can't recall seeing that coming from Claude4. It's giving us a breakdown of the tech stack. And it's giving us these project setup instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and run all of these instructions and then manually copy across all of these files. While running through this, there's actually something very interesting that I can see here. With Claude 4, it kind of generated some of the components halfway through the code, and I then had to enter something like continue for it to continue with the code. Now this could simply be a matter of the maximum tokens being set somewhere, but with Grok, I'm actually getting the complete view. So if I scroll down, we get everything, so all the code, and then we get these instructions to run the app and these additional notes. So it seems like we managed to get everything back in a single response, and this response is way shorter than the one that we got from Claude 4, but of course it all depends on the final result. This is interesting. Grok4 decided to use JavaScript instead of TypeScript, and I think for a lot of production-grade applications, you do want to use TypeScript instead. So let's prompt it. Please use TypeScript instead. I just found it interesting that it would default to JavaScript and not TypeScript. All right, so it seems like it's given me the solution in TypeScript now, so I'll continue copying across all of this. All right, I've copied across all of the files. So Grok is now saying that in order to run the app, we need to add this tsconfig.json file, which we already have. Then it's saying run this command. So in the terminal, let's run this and let's open this page. All right, so it seems we've actually got styling on this app. Let's go to log workout. This form looks way better and it does seem to be using shad and components. So for the exercises, let's just enter squat. We'll do 10 sets with 10 reps and let's click on add exercise. All right, this simply allows us to add more exercises. So let's click on Safe Workout. It seems like there's some error coming from this Zod library. So I'm just going to copy this error and let's give it to Grok4. And let's see if it's able to resolve this issue. All right, so it's giving us a few changes that we need to make. So I'm going to copy all of this code across and we'll try again. All right, I've copied everything across. So let's try to save this again. Get this message saying workout logged. So let's go back to the dashboard and we can see that we logged one workout. And I guess if we go to history, we can see an entry under this date. And when I expand this, it doesn't seem to show anything though. But what's interesting is it is saying this one workout logged. 
So I'm assuming this is retrieving the workout from the database, it's just not displaying it correctly on the UI. The real test is if we refresh this page, we still see one entry, which means the SQL database was indeed created and this data is persisted. Let's give this one last chance. So in the chat, let's say, after logging the exercise, I can see there is one exercise in the dashboard, only the counter, but when I visit the history page, it says there are no exercises. So we'll give it as one final chance and then we'll see what we get. All right, so it's giving us a potential fix. So I'm going to copy this across and we'll try again. All right, I've made the change. So let's go to history. Let's expand this. And now indeed we do see our exercise. So let me know in the comments which model you prefer for generating this app. But in my view, Claude spent a lot more tokens in generating its application, but it did get the database right the first time, but the styling was completely off where Grok used way less tokens. And I did ask for a minimum application. So I do feel like Grok actually gave me what I asked for, but we had to reprompt it three times to get this history view to work. Now Grok 4 also supports vision. So let's have a look at adding vision capabilities to our workflows. And finally, we'll also have a look at Grok's native web search capability as well. First, let's have a look at adding vision. So I'm just going to call this Grok for vision demo and for this we'll actually keep it simple so let's just add a manual trigger and then what we'll do next is actually add the http node as the grok node in n8n currently doesn't support image processing so what we'll use instead is the grok api to analyze the image so we'll change the method to post then for the url enter https colon slash slash api.x.ai slash v1 slash chat slash completions. Then under authentication, click on generic credential type. Then for the auth type, select header auth. And then let's create a new credential. I'll just call this xai auth demo. Now for the name of this field, we need to call it authorization and it needs to be entered exactly like this. Then for the value, we need to enter the value bearer, and I'm actually using notepad because if I enter this in this field, it's actually masked out. So you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So this value is bearer space, and then your API token, which you created earlier. So it's your XAI token. All right, so what you'll do is paste all of that into this field, and then save this. Now I'm not going to do it again as I've already created my credentials. So I'll just select the one that I've created already. Then let's enable sent body. And then for specify body, click on using JSON. Then in this JSON field, I'm going to switch over to expression. Let's expand this. And in this field, paste in the following JSON structure. You can copy this from the description in this video. This is simply the payload that XAI expects. This is where we can pass a user message. So in here, we can simply say something like, describe the image. And then under image URL, we can provide a URL to an image. For instance, I'll go to pixels and let's grab this image. Then I'll copy the URL and paste it into this field. Now all we have to do is test this step. And cool, let's have a look at the response. In here, we can see this response from the assistant. And in the content, it's saying, this image captures a serene, picturesque beachside scene, likely taken at an outdoor cafe or terrace overlooking the ocean. Cool, so that's how you can use Grok Vision in your workflows. And then finally, Grok also comes with built-in web search capabilities. So in N8N, if we had to ask this agent something like, what is the latest news from XAI? we'll simply get some outdated answer from October 2024. And of course, this is not the latest news. Now, hopefully N8N will release some feature in the near future that will enable web search. But if you want to use that feature right now, what you can do is the following. I'll just add another trigger manually node. Then what we'll do 
is add the HTTP request node again, as we will be calling the XAI API. So for the method, let's select post. For the URL, we'll use the same endpoint that we used for the vision feature. For the authentication, we'll select generic credential type, and we'll select our header auth, and then the XAI header auth that we created earlier. Then under body, we'll change this to JSON. Let's switch over to expression. Let's expand this. And we'll then add in this payload. And again, you can copy this from the description in the video. And all we're doing is we're passing in our user message. And we're also including the search parameters property, which is something I think the N8N team can add quite easily in the near future. But this simple parameter will enable web search mode. So if we now execute the step, we now get this response from the agent that gives us information based on July 13, 2025, which is up to date. And then scrolling down, we also get the citations back as well, giving us up to date information along with a lot of different citations. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more N8N content. YouTube thinks you'll find this following video interesting. So click on the card on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.